Look on your social media feeds. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Krypton's Legacy, a Superman podcast. Covering all of Clark Kent's greatest adventures in comics, film, and animation. With your hosts, Adam and Nick. Welcome to another episode of Krypton's Legacy, a Superman podcast and vidcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam. And with me is my co-host, Nick. Nick, how's it going? Doing super. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing fantastic. Um, it's always fun, especially, uh, well, to talk to you at any point in time. But yeah, Likewise. When, whenever we're talking about the DCU or the burgeoning, the new DCU that's, that's, that's coming, that's, that's fast approaching, uh, that shockingly people seem to forget actually starts in 2024 with Creature Commandos. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime we're talking about that DCU, I'm, I'm excited to talk with mm-hmm. you, especially. And uh, last time we talked uh, Superman, we, we talked a lot about Superman. We did uh, the first episode of the animated series, which will continue next time we talk about Superman. Uh, uh, we talked about, uh, we did a review of uh, the classic uh, Superman for all seasons. And we talked about the casting of the engineer, which is a member of the authority uh, team that will be in in Superman Legacy. And I remember when, just as we were about to go off the air, I double checked just to make sure no new other news had dropped. And there hadn't been. So I was talking like a smart ass saying, oh, see, we, we, at, least <laughs> be drop, there, Adam. at least they didn't drop any news while, we, while we're in the midstream of recording. Well, it was like an hour or two later. As we wrapped up that recording, we hung up. I went to have dinner. I, I'm sure you went to do the same. And then James Gunn, or not James Gunn at the time, but but the Hollywood Reporter and the other trades decided, you know what, let's drop some more Superman news. Yeah. And in subsequent weeks since the last we recorded about Superman, more casting had dropped. So we thought, let's do a you know a smaller episode. Of, of of Krypton's Legacy podcast, talking about the latest Superman rumblings, and so that's what we're here to do today. Um, we've got a lot of casting uh, to discuss, uh, a bit about uh, a bit of info about Supergirl, one of tomorrow's law, well. uh, and the return of a very important word. Uh, to the Superman on film saga. Um, you know what? Let's start with that. So James Gunn recently posted on Instagram an image that is in the office of the Superman legacy uh, visual effects department. And that image is a sign that is a recreation of the sign that Richard Donner had in his office of Superman flying by and pulling a word along with him. And that word is verisimilitude. Uh, and basically w- what that means is that to, tr- to, to treat the, the project that you're making, no matter how fantastical or, you know, unrealistic as it could possibly seem, as if it is really happening. So everybody in the crew has to believe that what they're putting on screen is real. Because if they believe it, then the audience, and and it's made with that authenticity, Richard Donner believed that that would translate to the audience. And given how uh, highly regarded and revered Superman the movie is, Mm -hmm. I'd venture to say that Richard Donner was correct in that statement. Uh, so it's nice to see James Gunn and crew uh, carrying on that philosophy. Um, what I think it kind of signals, and and James Gunn has hinted as much, is that wherever possible, he's going to use practical effects. Because uh, even somebody had posted an image of I think it was Brandon Routh on Superman Returns. 
uh, and it was a green screen. It was him flying on wires with a giant green screen, and the guys pulling the wires had the green suits on, and the fan asked, do you ever get tired of being surrounded by that much green screen? And James Gunn sa said something to the effect of, I usually don't work in that much, uh, around that much green or blue screen. So that mm -hmm. to me hints that wherever possible, James Gunn is going to use practical effects. Like he's even mentioned building practical sets. I think that's very important, uh, Nick. Uh, and it's a welcome reemergence of, of, look, I get that if Superman's hovering in space, you can't put David Corn and Sweat in space <laughs> in a Superman costume because last time I checked, unless they're wearing a special suit, humans cannot breathe in space. Uh, and David Corn Sweat is not Kryptonian, he is in fact human being. <laughs> Therefore, at least to my knowledge, he can't breathe in space. So in those instances, yes, CGI is going to be employed. <laughs> But, but, you know, when Superman is lifting, just for hypothetical scenario's sake, the globe of the Daily Planet, you can make a foam prop and have him lift that instead of stand there like an idiot with his hands in the, in the air holding nothing and then fill it all in with CGI. So I think... When we talk about practical effects, I think that's what, wherever possible, James Gunn's going to use practical, and I think that's a good thing. So, what mm -hmm. do you make of that, and and the the, the principle of versatility being uh, returning to the Superman film franchise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I you got to have some CGI, you know, in yeah. in a fantastical comic book movie, like you just have to. But I think the less the better in some regard as well too because i think you know if you can make a movie feel like it's real like like that could actually happen yeah i think it allows for more of a sense of connection um with the audience as well as far as like you know like you don't have to just sit there and act like you're reading a comic book movie or reading a comic book you know you should just be able to visualize it yourself like yeah. that like something like that could actually happen yeah. um as far as the word verisimilitude you know appearing in the visual effects department i mean that just makes me feel good you know everything that that I that I've heard and seen about this Superman Legacy movie just it it just gets me emotional because you know it feels like there's so much care yeah that James Gunn has has for this character in this movie it just feels like there's a special movie uh, being developed and you know having like you know all this John Burns and you know Superman for all seasons you know all yeah. all the classics that are kind of you know above James Gunn for inspiration you know to him uh, to let him know that you know what's been done in the past isn't necessarily that version of Superman, you know, that you'd always need to go off of. So it just feels like all, all the right ingredients are kind of being added uh, to the recipe here. And, you know, and, and, and I, and I think that we are going to get that Superman movie that I think a lot of us have been longing for, uh, for quite some time, regardless if there's been a Superman movie that's came out in this modern era that, that you, that you really love. I think to actually see and feel like there's a Superman movie being made, I think it's going to hit a little bit differently. And that's what uh, seeing like a war like from uh, versimilitude, excuse me, uh, kind of signifies to me. And I think it's important that it's above the office of the VFX department because yeah. think about it. They have to make their visual effects look as real as possible. Mm -hmm. Like if it looks like a video game, you know, and rubbery and all kinds of, you know, there were shots as, and I, and I am a fan of, I enjoyed Superman Return. So, but there were shots in it where, I could tell that was CGI Brandon Roth and not Brandon Roth. Mm -hmm. As, and it took you out of the movie. So the, the the visual effects department, when they are using CGI, have to make it look as if it's what you're seeing is really there and really happening. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very apropos that it's on the office of the, the VFX department, uh, more so uh, than anywhere else. But so I, I, I'm happy that, that that principle is being employed. Now, back to the casting. So, we're, we're not going to talk about it as we got the news. We're going in an order, uh, what I think is order of importance. And again, that's not a slight at any of the actors that are, that are, that, that, that are, that have been chosen. It's just 
the characters that I think are more important. Like I'm, we're saving the best for last, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, one of the one of the actresses that uh, that is joining the the cast is Sarah Sampaio, and she's playing Eve Tessmacher. Um Now, uh, Sarah is a actress slash model. Uh, uh, so I will just say uh, thank you, James Gunn, for uh, casting a Victoria's Secret model in this movie um, <laughs> on the list instantaneously. Anyway, so Eve Bestmarker, now it's described as, as you know, Lex's uh, assistant slash henchwoman slash love interest. Mm. Um, I know that in li- like Eve Tessmacher is most notably known uh, for being in the 1978 uh, Richard Donner classic, but the character has since appeared in both live action in the Supergirl CW series and as well in the co- in various comics. So the character has been around beyond the Donnerverse. Um, and I think what we'll see out of Miss Tessmacher in this is something more along the lines of Mercy Graves than just, you know, I don't think she'll be a pretty face that's kind of um, acts doofusy, kind of like, you know, in, in the 78 film, right? You know, like, mm-hmm. uh, so... I think it's more of a more of a mercy type character than than you know anything else. I just uh, why I think they're using the Miss Tessmacher name to be honest with you is just to, to be different than what's come before. Because remember in in the in the in BVS we did get Mercy, mm-hmm. h- however brief, but but we got her, and so I, I think it's just more let, let's do something different than. Than just calling her mercy again. So I, but what do you make of 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 Eve Tessmacher being in this? I'm not familiar with with the actress, uh, so I can't speak about her her capability. However, I'm gonna at, at this point I have nothing but trust for James Gunn. So, but what mm-hmm. do you think of this this character uh, being? In? Yeah, no, I, I think we were kind of talking a little bit off air when we kind of heard about the casting too. Is that you know it did shock me a little bit that. He did choose Miss Tasmacher and not Mercy Graves. Like, you know, right away, this is it. It felt like everything was going in line to have like a more Superman animated series uh, look type and feel to it. But, you know, I, I like you, you know, I'm not really too familiar uh, with the actress, but, you know, I think like, like one thing that we'll constantly say throughout this episode is that, you know, I think James Gunn doesn't really miss with casting. I think he usually somehow always finds a way to, to find the right people. Um, like you, I don't think she's just going to be a pretty face that, you know, yeah. <laughs> Lois Lane can maybe punch in the face, maybe time to time, you know, I kind of look at yeah. like, uh, like a, when Cindy Prescott punch Gail Weathers in the face, just, just, just for the fun of it. Right. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll maybe get some iteration of that, you know, that I'm sure she's going to go toe to toe with Lois Lane and, and good luck going toe to toe with Rachel Brosnahan. I will just, uh, say that right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it, it makes the world feel lived in. Obviously, like, you know, if, if Lex is going to already have some sort of henchwoman mm-hmm. next to him already, this has already been a Lex that has, you know, been established. And it's kind of been out there uh, through a few years. So I kind of like it, too, that it's like it's not like a complete origin necessarily per se. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm eager, to, eager to see this. Right. And Superman 78, like you said, too, it's another blueprint. So. Yeah, it's 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 uh, you know. I mean, if you're gonna borrow, I, like I've always said, don't don't exactly copy the homework word for word. But right. if you're gonna be inspired and borrow from something, be inspired and borrow from the best of the best, right? And so, cliff notes are different than book notes, my friends. Yeah, indeed. indeed. <laughs> um, another casting that was announced was that of now it might not necessarily be for this movie. The character is going to be mentioned supposedly in this movie, and then appear throughout the DCU, and that is the character of Maxwell Lord, and that character will be played by Sean Gunn. 
of course, the brother of James Gunn. Um, now, there's a certain group of people that are upset because, well, James Gunn cast his brother. And somehow that devalues the choice. Um, first of all, let me say that the only other live action Maxwell Lord that we've gotten on film in a movie has been Pedro Pascal in Wonder Woman 1984. Now, I'm one of the people that, despite its problems, I enjoyed Wonder Woman 1984. I think Pedro Pascal is a fantastic actor. However, in my humble opinion, and it's just my opinion, the Maxwell Lord in that movie was horrendous. So I don't care how high quality an actor um, Pedro Pascal is. There's nowhere to go for Maxwell Lord but up. I don't think James Gunn would have hired his brother just because he's his brother if he didn't think he could do what was required for that specific role. The other thing I'll say, if you're getting, if you're part of a certain fan base and you're getting mad because of a, of a as, and I'm not saying this, this is what people say, a Nepo hire, let me, let me just remind you, let me just hold on a second. Eli Snyder is, is directing commercials now. You know why Eli Snyder is directing commercials now? Because he's banging off of his father's film career and success. Deborah Snyder is a producer in Hollywood. Well, guess what? You know whose movies she produces? Zack Snyder's. You know why she's a producer in Hollywood? Because her husband's a big name director. So if you're getting upset over this casting, then you should be getting upset over Deborah Snyder producing Zack Snyder movies and Eli Snyder directing commercials. Like all I'm saying is, look, be as as our friend, our mutual friend Carlos would say, be intellectually honest with yourself. And if you're going to be upset about one, you have to be upset about the others too, because it's the it's it's technically the same thing. So. Um, that's all I'm saying. So what do you think about, first of all, the inclusion of Maxwell Lord in the overall DC universe and about Sean Gunn playing it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, Maxwell Lord's a very important indigo character in, in the you know, DC you know, pantheon. I mean, that that's a huge name that, that you're establishing in your, in your universe. I mean, you know, any fan of Justice League International... Yeah. Um, immediately knows knows Maxwell Lord, right? I mean, you know, in some right. iterations, yeah, he is part of the Justice League. Yeah. Other iterations, may, may, maybe not so much, but um, we're probably getting the latter, I, I would assume. Um, well, right James did bat. say he doesn't like the terminology of a villain for right. yeah. Maxwell Lord, right? So, um, But then, like, the, the other half of it is that I wouldn't say this was, like, on my bingo card, per se. Like, you know, if you sure. were to list of people that I think could play Maxwell Lord. I probably wouldn't have told you Sean Gunn's sure, one of them. Yeah, of you know? um, but again, like, like I kind of just said a few minutes ago, you know, I don't think James Gunn really misses with casting, and I think he kind of has an eye um, for certain things like this. Is it a little bit of nepotism? We can probably have an objective conversation and say, you can maybe say that, maybe sure. it's a little bit, I would say maybe it's more favoritism, that he just likes to work with people that he knows he can trust. Sure, yeah. Um, there's a little bit of that as well, but you know, it, it is easy to get upset over these things. Too, every right? direct, yeah. every director right. does that. Is my point. Yeah, of course. You, yeah, you know, like so that that's more my point than anything else. Is like, mm -hmm. sure, is that a part of it? Yeah, uh, I think I think look, Sean Gunn would have found his way in this universe one way or the other. I think so. Right? But but what I'm saying is, if the role truly is one that matters, I don't think James Gunn would have just said. Here, I'm going to give you this big role. Right. Just because you're my brother. I don't know if you're qualified for it, but you're my brother, so here. 
Like, I'm sure James Gunn knows what he wants out of Maxwell Lord and knows that his brother can deliver that. Otherwise, somebody else would be playing Maxwell Lord. Um, mm -hmm. So, again, was it my first choice? To be honest, I didn't even think Maxwell Lord was going to be in the DCU. Right. I, was, I had no... No, or later down the line, at least. Yeah, right? if anything, yeah. So, and I think, I, like, if you look at who's been cast so far in the DCU, I don't think a version of Justice League International is out of the question, my friend. Because we've got Guy Gardner. We've now got Max One Lord. We know we're getting Batman. Uh, I mean, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, Blue Beetles, you know, coming in. So, uh, it's possible. Uh, uh, now, one of the other castings, I remember when I said in our last episode, I said, I think one of the next castings we're going to hear about is Jimmy Olsen. Well, it wasn't the immediate next casting we heard about, but it was one of the next ones. And we do have a Jimmy Olsen, and Jimmy Olsen will be played by, by uh, let, me, let me try and pronounce this now without butchering it. Hold on. Skyler... Gizondo, I think is how mm -hmm. you say it. Um, again, I haven't seen him per se in anything, but I'm just going to go off physical appearance here, okay? Because that's all I can go off of because I haven't seen him act. I know he's been in quite a few things, but I haven't seen him act. But, but just based on physical appearance alone, if, if, if you want to look at Perfect casting. Skyler Gizondo as Jimmy Olsen is the dictionary definition of perfect casting, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, like, he, he looks like he's ripped right off the page. It's right up there with Brosnahan and, and Corn Sweat. Like, the, the three core members of the Daily Planet staff that James Gunn's cast is pure perfection, just from a visual standpoint. Um, all I ask from this Jimmy Olsen, from James Gunn, regarding this Jimmy Olsen, is please don't make him a CIA agent undercover, and please don't have him get shot in the head, because Jimmy Olsen is more than a, a, a shock va value. Let me shoot him, because I think it'll be cool. So, with that being said, Nick, what do you think of, of Skyler as Jimmy? Yeah, I, I would say outside of Rachel Bosnahan being my favorite cast, and I think this is the one that feels the most, I'll say, like, accurate. Like, maybe, like like you said, too. Like, it does, like, from a visual standpoint, like, like when you just look at the kid, like, he, he does kind of look like Jimmy Olsen. I mean, like, just put a bow tie in on yeah. And a sweater vest on the kid, and you know, and <laughs> give, give him a watch, and that, that's Jimmy Olsen, yeah, uh, right there to me. I mean, he, he is in, he's been in a lot of like kind of smaller comedic uh type movies, like uh, like a book smart licorice pizza, like yeah. you know, like kind of like smaller roles that like he has like good comedic timing with. Um, he's which you need for Jimmy, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. you know, like he certainly looks like he could be Superman's pal, uh, per se. I can easily see him, you know, sharing screen with David Corn Sweat. Um, yeah. easily, um, and, and I've kind of long said it too, like, there's just no way that you could have a Superman movie without Jimmy Olsen, but you're well, gonna we, have Superman. We've seen a couple, Olsen. but... You the, know, the, but I mean, the, like, the, if, you're, if you're really cool. going for comic book accuracy at yeah, this yeah, point, yeah, like, there's yeah. just there's just no way that Jimmy Olsen can, can't be, like, an integral part, part of this movie, so, I mean, hey, you're telling me Superman's there, Lois Lane's there, Jimmy Olsen's there. Spoiler alert, Lex Luthor's going to be there. Yeah, we'll talk about him the, next. The, the Kents are going to be cast at some point. I'm Perry sure White is on, is on the way. Yeah, Perry, Perry White's, White's on, on the way. way. Looks and sounds like a Superman movie to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, imagine that, Nick. We're <laughs> actually starting to get, I mean, people were worried that, oh my God, where are the Superman characters? Yeah. Surprise, surprise, they're all here now. Yeah. Funny how that works. Funny how patience. And everything will work itself out, isn't it? <laughs> Funny how that works. Speaking yep. of Lex Luthor, uh, Superman's phonically challenged nemesis, that role's been cast as well. And, I mean, we can't... Uh, we, this is the role that was announced 
two hours after we we yeah. signed off last episode it was announced in the hollywood reporter but it wasn't confirmed until recently by james gunn and that is that lex luther will be played by nicholas holt um i i I think Nicholas Holt is a fantastic actor. Um, of course, I know him as Beast in the second X-Men trilogy. Um, but I also saw the movie where he played J.R.R. Tolkien. Mm-hmm. I think it was just called Tolkien, the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm mixed on the movie, but his performance was great. Um, and so, I think this is really good casting. I think what, what I like about it is that Superman and Lex are going to be contemporaries age-wise. Or, you know, we're relatively close. It's a three and a half year difference, which is a lot less than 20 years, right? Um, but, or 30. But, so they're contemporaries. And, you know, Corrin's with 6'4. And I think Holt is like 6'3, six, 6'3 three, six, three and a half. So they're going to be virtually eye to eye. But Superman is going to be slight, going to slightly edge out Lex Luthor, and if you write Lex Luthor correctly, then even that slight height difference will be something that annoys Lex mm-hmm. in regards to Superman. Bingo, because of his ego and you know. So, and I really just like the picture that that James Gunn posted on social media of, of them in his in his office in his superman uh decorated office yeah. <laughs> i still yeah. want to visit him one and look at all the all the production art setting up the animosity already you know i've never wished to be a dog or a cat but what i wouldn't give to have the eyes of james gunn's pets that have visited that office uh just to know what's what's in there um but i like the casting choice and that quote in the Dark Knight continues to ever be true. And that is, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the, vi- the villain. <laughs> it was true of Michael Keaton, who went from Batman to the Vulture. And it's now true of Nicholas Holt, who went from Beast to Lex <laughs> Luthor. Um, and well, so I'm, I'm all for this casting. Uh, Nick, what about you? Yeah, I've been. This is the one that I've been kind of trying to sit with um, for a little bit because I really wanted this to simmer for a bit. Because I'm of two different minds of this one. On the one hand, it feels the most inspired of all the castings that we've gotten, just because I know we were maybe anticipating somewhat of I wouldn't say an older Lex, but maybe not quite in like that same age range as as you know as a Clark Kent or Superman uh, would be. But you know, like you, I think Nicholas Holt is a great actor. He's certainly done a lot of more quirkier. Uh, roles as of late um, so I, I'm going to be very curious to see what type of Lex this is going to be I know there's been um, some sort of comparisons that it, it might feel sort of similar to the Eisenberg uh, Lex that we got in beef yes I don't quite think that's where it's going to go even though in terms of age it, it might feel that way but well like, I mean in age I guess I guess yeah. Cavill and, and Eisenberg were close but yeah. in terms of in terms of the portrayal it, w- it was. I, like, I don't think this version of listen, Lex is, is going to no, be putting I, Jolly Ranchers and Miss Tyson. I don't want. I don't want to. Well, 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 I mean, <laughs> just in the bedroom. But, I don't know what but listen, <laughs> look, I, I'm. I'm. I don't like to to pre ordain a movie before I see it. However, right. I'm going to break my own rule and say, no matter what, James Gunn has written on that page, and no matter how he tells. Nicholas Holt to play it. You 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 can't get listen. You can't get much worse 
than whatever the hell Eisenberg was doing. Like, I'm sorry, you can't. I, I now, I, I've been known to put my foot in my mouth before, but it would take a real big stretch to be putting my foot in my mouth with, with that one. Like, like it can't get much worse, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. It can, it can only go up. I don't know how many degrees, but it can only go up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, and then, and then I would say, too, I'm kind of with you in the uh, in the same boat that I like that this is going to be a Lex and a, and a Superman that are contemporaries, because it, 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 at least to me, you know, from a visual standpoint, it's a little bit more realistic to see a younger businessman kind of have animosity towards yeah. another younger in, individual, because, I mean, that's just about as relatable in the real world as you can get is that, you know, is how jealousy just spews from even the littlest of things that even granted it might be ridiculous, but that's kind of how it is in, in the real world versus I think having an older Lex and a younger Superman, while it kind of fits in animation to me, I think we're kind of starting to see, especially in these comic book movies, that just because you have an older veteran actor as your villain doesn't mean that it's going to translate. So I think yeah. taking a swing with a younger um, quality capable actor like Nicholas Hall, that I think, I, th I think I think we're gonna I think I think we got something good here. Yeah, I, I, and again, you're you're adding you're adding an uh, an actor with talent, and a, a film production can never go wrong with adding more talent on that level. So you know what I mean. So it's 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 yeah. My I'm just curious now. Do you think he was testing way back when we heard about? Yeah. Do you think he was testing that whole time for Lex? Like, was he even in contention for Superman? I'm starting to wonder now. Yeah, I mean, I never really kind of bought him as Superman anyway. Like that, that, that's no like, like no offense, saying, man. Anybody can make you believe <laughs> in anything. I think he was. I think he tested as Superman to see how he would work off of corn sweat, to be honest, or how okay. he would work off of like brass and hand. And I think. Right. <laughs> And, like, I mean, I don't know if, like, because I don't really think that that's completely, like, fair to say that we only bought you in this role, even though we never knew you were going to get it, to sort of create yeah. animosity for you to have, you know, yeah. to build toward this character. I mean, hey, he lost out on Batman, and <clears throat> but that happened. Yeah. And we almost thought he was going to get Superman, right? He was almost Batman in, in the leaves. Well, we know he won't be uh, Batman, Batman in the DCU, so we can rule yeah. out folks. We can rule out Nicholas Holt as DCU's Batman now. Yeah. So yeah. that fan so, yeah. casting can yeah. go out the window. Yeah, no, I, I think I think he was always up for Lex Luthor. Okay, yeah, I do too. I'm definitely <laughs> starting to believe that for sure. Uh, before we move on to the Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow uh, bits, one more thing I'll say about Superman. There was a rumor that that um, uh, what's the actor's name? Um, Star Wars dad, help me out. Uh oh. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a rumor yeah. yeah. yeah, right. that he was going to be Jor-El. Kurt Russell was going to be Jor-El, mm -hmm. and James Gunn's debunked that. And he said, I, I love working with Kurt Russell. I had a lot of fun. But I find it hard to be, believe that he would be a father to a toddler. as you know, Because when, when you see Jor-El, that's when you see Jor-El, right? Right. And, so it, 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 it leaves the implication that if Jor-El is in this, that James Gunn is going to go with a younger Jor-El. Yeah. Which that'll be a first of its, its kind. Because Martin Brando was Martin Brando. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Russell Crowe wasn't a spring chicken. Uh well, I mean, he was not fair to believe. <laughs> was he like fifties or sixties? Yeah, I don't know how old he is, but it was late, mid to late fifties, probably. Yeah. when he played Jor-El. So, um, if he's going younger, this will be a first in Superman lore for a younger actor to play uh, Jor-El. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I highly doubt that it will happen, but just, you just. If, if it was me and I had the choice, I think it would be a nice fitting homage to Superman's legacy on film to cast Brandon Roth as jor -El. Hmm. That's really cool. I, again, I don't think he's going to do that. 
But if he did, I'd kind of dig it. I think he's he, he's like the right age for it too. Yeah, forty. I think 40, so. Forty something. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at. I mean, like, I think Minor Alpha be. Yeah, he's like forty four, so he'd probably yeah. be perfect for it. Yeah, I mean, like, I think you're looking at, like, you know, like a Brandon Routh. I would even say somebody like a Jude Law. I think would yeah, have to fit yeah. that bill as well. Um, like mid forties, like mid. I've heard Hayden Christensen, but I'm like, you can't cast Darth Vader as, as Superman's dad at this point. I mean, can can Natalie Portman be um, Laura? If that's the case. Yeah, look, I'd like to see Natalie Portman <laughs> more things because where, where where's the pen? Uh, Natalie Portman. You're thinking of it. All of I, I won't confirm nor deny that you might be on the Earth 2 Multiverse Wives list. Oh, no. See, there we go. So now we get a little bit more of Nick's list. This is the first, <laughs> the first name that's popped out on that list, uh, <laughs> aside from Sasha. But yeah, so we'll see if Jarrell makes it into the film and who will play him. But it won't be Kurt Russell, according to James Gunn. Yeah. Um, now, there is a little bit of Supergirl uh, rumblings to end off the show. Um, and that is according to I think it was coming from Daniel RPK so again DCU leaks too yeah a DCU leak so nothing's confirmed but, so take it with a grain of salt from where it's coming from but they both intimate that James Gunn and whoever the eventual director of Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is, will be looking for a new actress to play uh, Supergirl, Kara zor as Sasha Kaye will not be brought back to star in the film. Uh, Nick, I'll throw it over to you first since you have your emotional connection to Sasha. <laughs> what, what's your take on all this news? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like first off, Thursday, you know, if it is true, it, it, it's a bummer in the sense that I would have loved to have seen uh, Sastra Kaya get a get a redo and get and get another chance to uh, kind of put a, put a, a more official stamp on uh, the character, so to speak. But you know, like our mantra is here on this show, like my mantra is always anything with comic books and comic book movies is that the actor is not bigger than the character. I will. Gladly, you know, I will hold her take as Supergirl in the Flash. You know, she'll always have a, a place at DC in my book. If this is true, you know, again, we don't really know. Um, I kind of have a... I've heard some rumblings that they might be looking in like that 18 to 25. Yeah, I, I, heard, I saw that too. You know, yeah. there is there is a casting call out there. I'm not going to say any names because I don't want to give, give up a source and anything like that. If you want to know, just DM me. Um, I'll tell you. But... Um, yeah, it, it, it's a bummer, you know, that that's actually what won't get to carry on. But I think we're kind of, I think we more so anticipated that we would be gearing towards a more Superman animated series, Supergirl yeah. type of approach anyway. And especially with the, you know, Woman of Tomorrow being an ad- adaptation of that novel, I think you're going to, maybe he just wants somebody with a little more gravitas. I don't know, you know, to carry that mantle. Yeah. Um, for me, like, I, I, you know, I like the uh, the Flash a lot as a film, uh, and Sasha Kaye, I enjoyed what she did with the role of Kara, especially that iteration and what the circumstances called for. Had she had been brought back, or if she even is, because again, nothing has been one hundred percent confirmed by Gunn saying that they're recasting. But if this, if, if if had she had been brought back, I would have seen that movie opening weekend, regardless. But now that she's potentially, you know, if if this is true and she's being recast, then this was kind of expected because if you look at what is happening in this DCU. So far, the only people being brought back are the Peacemaker crew, which I include as Amanda Waller because she's part of the Suicide Squad aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, And 
Cholo Maraduena as as Rubido. Mm -hmm. The 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 everybody the you know, the core Justice Leaguers are all being recast. I expect I expected that to happen pretty much with Supergirl as well. The only way I think Sasha would have been brought back, no questions asked, is if the Flash had made a crap ton of money. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Someone's got to take the fall. You know, there, 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 there is. There was so. There is so much baggage surrounding the 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 DC EU that the smartest thing to do is to recast the core roles. Now, you know the worst kept secret in Hollywood is that Jason Momoa is going to be playing Lobo. But that is an entirely different character than Aquaman. So, mm -hmm. just because he's back, he's not back in that same sense, right? So, if they bring back Sasha Kaye down the road as Jessica Cruz, for example, that's cool. But but it's if you bring her back as Supergirl. The the implication is that the first thing in people's minds is going to be the Flash, and which then, by, by virtue of that, brings up DCEU memories because Ezra Miller was the Flash in that iteration of 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 the story. They want to divorce themselves from that iteration the dcu mm -hmm. iteration the best way to do that is to recast as many of the core roles as possible like I, like i said to me aside from the roles that we already know are, are being kept around there's probably only other one other one that's gonna come back mm -hmm. and it's probably marvel yeah everybody else is gonna be different mm -hmm. and so once the Flash did what it did or didn't do what it was hoped that it would do, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the writing was on the wall. Yeah. And so, but as Nick so eloquently put, the mantra here is that the character is bigger than the actor or actress that plays them. And that is true of Supergirl. No matter how much we personally enjoy it, Sasha Kaye mm -hmm. in the role. Um, so, if and when Supergirl is recast, uh, Nick and I will come back on here and share our thoughts with, of that casting. Mm -hmm. It will remain to be seen if my pen clicks. Which, uh, which I hear. Spoiler alert! I'll, I'll give you guys a little, a little Christmas, Christmas unwrapped gift here. Spoiler. You might, might want to keep your eyes peeled next month. Just, just saying. Which is this is December. So January. I, yeah, I've heard. I want to. I want to be on, on your on your Twitter. I've heard. Right? I've heard rumors that in January there's going to be a director announcement for Woman of Tomorrow at the very least. So. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see, but uh, that's pretty much all the news we have regarding Legacy, uh, Superman Legacy, and Woman of Tomorrow. Uh, so now we're up to date. Unless we stop this recording and James Gunn says, you know what? Here's oh, look, oh, look, the Kents have been cast. <laughs> so, and look, I'm not sure. I won't be shocked. I, I'm, uh, I'm half expecting it. But as of this very moment, you're up to date, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You have our thoughts. Maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree with, with our assessment of these castings and these, these situations. But there it is. We're up to date. But we're going to have plenty more of these episodes oh, yeah. coming in short order. That so movie's going to be shooting soon. Yeah, so get ready. Uh, and uh, the next time we talk Superman, unless it's th there's like, you know, 12 casting announcements between now and when we record next, 
there'll probably be a comic book attached, a comic book review attached to our episode. Yeah. Um, I'll discuss off air with Nick which comic book that's going to be. So, but you can expect more, more graphic novels and comic book uh, reviews uh, in terms of the world. And, and, and you know, breaking down the suit is going to be like a episode in and of oh, that, yeah, the suit's I mean, we, like, we got to break down like yeah. every stitch yeah. of that suit. Yeah, one one picture is going to be two hours. So I, you know, I mean, so make your coffees, <laughs> get your popcorn because that episode's coming. I mean, yeah. I mean, we got to really dissect every fabric. Oh, yeah, magnifying glass, okay. the whole night. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be a long one, folks. It's does so the S look crystallized or does it look stitched on there? Yeah. With, with, <laughs> what what year what version of the s is that what year is that from so you know uh, what shade of red is that is that cape uh, as long as it's not brown like the superman return or burgundy right. like the superman return. Oh, but yeah uh, so we're gonna have a lot more episodes to come uh because things are going to be happening with legacy and we're and nick and i are going to be covering it so stay tuned and we'll bring you all the very latest with our thoughts on it but for now that's all we got. Um, but if you want to talk Superman or anything DCU related with Nick or I, you can on social media. Nick, where do they track you down? Yeah, thank you so much, brother Adam. Always a fun time here. I'm on Twitter and Letterboxd at Nick Zanuck. You guys can most notably hear me on the Vigilante 1939 podcast where we just celebrated our 200th episode. So thank you so much Congratulations. again. Congratulations. To everybody uh, for all your support and for all your listening as well. 2024 hopefully is going to be another another really good year uh, just for fans, for podcasting, for comic book movies. We'll see. Um, but just excited to kind of keep the train rolling. And uh, yeah, excited to get time to keep this train rolling as well, Adam. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Uh, if you want to track me down, it's at Adam on, Adam underscore least fan on Twitter. We have the Facebook group. I will post a link in the description below. Click that, and we can continue the conversation there if you so choose. But until next time, remember, Superman Legacy is forever. From the first. Last minute casting announcement after we record an episode. To the last. So long, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.